Hi guys, Nicholas here at Online Calisthenics and today we're going to talk about movement and muscle chains. We're going to discuss what muscle chains are, why is it important, and how calisthenics can help us take control of those muscle chains. It's very important to understand that the body works as a unit and that everything is related. So if you're moving your foot, it's going to imply moving a lot of other parts, for example, in the body, the hips um, and the rib cage, not just your leg. So we're going to go a little deeper about uh, what is a muscle chain to start with. Uh, a muscle chain or a kinetic chain is actually um, a interrelation of nervous, muscular and skeletal systems that all create a movement together. Um, it describes um, interrelated groups of body segments, uh, connecting joints and muscle that work together to perform those movements. Um, and it basically connects all of it together. We have five main chains, uh, commonly known uh, the upper chain, the lower chain, the anterior and the posterior chain, and there's a spiral chain that links everything together um, around the body. So this is an overview. It's not um, a full extended explanation. So you can dig deeper if that's a topic that interests you. I highly recommend that you do your own research, but that's just a starter to help you understand a little bit better. So here on the uh, little graph that we have here, you can see that there's examples of how our body is connected. So the spiral chain here connects your uh, left foot to your right shoulder. Um, there's uh, the, the deep front line, the superficial front line, there's the lateral line, there's the back line, there's a bunch of them. So I put that graph here and I'm gonna show you a few more so that you can uh, have a better idea visually of how it works. But um, often we refer to the upper kinetic chain. Uh, it involves the fingers, the wrists, the forearms, the elbows, uh, your upper arms, shoulders, shoulder blades, and all the spinal column. Um, the lower kinetic chain uh, often uh, is often referred to the toes, the feet, the ankles, the lower part of the legs, your knees, the upper part of the leg, the hips, the pelvis, and the spine. So as you can see, it both connects. The upper connects through the hips with the lower, and it's all interconnected uh, in that matter. So I will show you a couple other graphs here uh, that I like uh, to show because they are very uh, easy to understand. Uh, that's um, a, uh, a graph that helps you see how everything is connected here. Uh, you will see that areas are meant to be a stabilizer in the body and others are meant to be movement oriented or mobile parts. So uh, they help us move in a smoother way, if you like. So everything is stacked over the other and it's uh, a, an amazing system that helps us move as best as possible. Understanding this helps us move better and overall prevents um, injuries and just makes your body more fluid when you activate it. Let's go over this one that I really particularly like that shows how your tibia actually impacts also your back. So your left shoulder is most likely connected to your right tibia. So whenever you perform movements such as handstands, levers, anything really that's a compound movement and it involves your whole body, you're moving one part, but you're also moving the other part connected at the other end of it. So keep that in mind when you practice because that really helps you visualize internally how your body is moving. Um, another one that I like is this one, even though it's a skeleton and it's less appealing, I think that this is very uh, self-speaking. You see that it wraps around. So your leg here, your tibia here, your right uh, leg is going to wrap around your rib cage. So basically the activation of your tibia is going to more or less contract or not your spine, your your um, your thoracic uh, spine area, so your rib cage, and it basically pulling down your foot is going to train and it's going to help stretching the whole chain, and it will help you tuck your rib cage in um, better than if you don't. So everything is possible. Keep in mind that this is not set in stone. Uh, if you're a master of movement, then you can probably do. 
uh, tricks and play around with your muscle chain. But having these graphs in, in mind uh, helps visualize everything. Uh, this one is uh, pretty useful as well. It shows you the front end of the body and uh, helps uh, visualize how the hips are, are huge, uh, have a huge impact for your back. Um, it goes without saying that it's connecting your back and your legs. So pay attention to um, hip health and hip mobility. Makes sense now that we see this. And uh, this is an example of a back chain here um, that also helps visualize how your leg here is highly impacting how your back and your rib cage activates or not. So keep these graphs in mind. Um, I'll post a bunch of links and sources in the description. So if you want to make uh, more and deeper research, um, feel free to do so. Um, so now that you, we've talked about um, what it is uh, a muscle chain, let's talk about why it's important. We mentioned that it's uh, basically what makes your movements fluid. But if we go a little deeper, um, we just got to understand what anatomy is versus kinesiology. Um, the first one is the language that describes the parts of the body individually. So um, they really are the uh, units that um, add up to be a system together. So then the kinesiology is the language of movement. Uh, through this, uh, it gives anatomy a context in which it's moving. So it's basically the language of movement um, and the role of anatomy is to describe the source of each uh, part of that movement. Uh, it helps us um, really understand um, and defines how each aspect of the body structure works together to create a coherent pattern overall. So um, these are fundamental elements to understand. It really helps you train better once you get this concept um, in your mind and you can visualize while you're training. If you close your eyes and try to feel what's going on in your body, that's gonna help uh, your overall motion. Um, so really that's important because little things impact other little things and at the end it creates a huge difference. So what happens at the foot level has repercussions throughout your entire body. You know, your force and balance all start from the foot, for example. A lot of us have, including myself, we have imbalances in our feet that play a huge role over our squatting abilities, for example, um, and our ankle flexion. And overall, our, uh, proportion, our ability to control the pelvis uh, as best as possible, it all comes from little parts and it adds up to be a bigger thing. So if your feet are not strong enough or capable enough, uh, the rest of your body has to compensate a certain way. Uh, so it's really essentially uh, a good thing to understand that feet are the start of the chain reaction for any movement we do when we're on the ground. And that chain reaction can be good, meaning that it's stable, or it can be not so good, meaning that you have to refine some areas and work on more mobility in some cases. Um, so really, uh, like I said before, we're all imbalanced and um, we're not optimal usually. So being, try, uh, being uh, consistently assessing ourselves and trying to refine our skills is an important factor of long-term physical progress really and avoiding uh, injuries and little problems that we uh, can um, encounter during our fitness journey. Uh, it happens to all of us and refining these uh, chains and this understanding helps getting stronger and better overall. Um, so now that we talked about what is a movement and a, a kinetic chain um, and why it's important, I wanted to dive a little deeper about how calisthenics can help us mastering those chains because it really does. Um, as I was referring in the beginning of the video, training as a unit the, video, the, the, the body is a unit. Uh, study the fascia. If you've never heard of it, uh, go ahead and study fascia. It really is the first part of the body that, you know, it wraps everything together. All of our systems are wrapped around uh, inside some kind of fascia. So go ahead and Google that and research that. There's a lot of videos out there about it now. We're starting to understanding a lot better than before. So 
uh, go ahead and try to research this. But as a general understanding, training your body as a full unit, um, such as, you know, with disciplines as like calisthenics and related disciplines like gymnastics or yoga, are different from weightlifting that traditionally focus on muscle isolation. There are some compound movements that are also awesome in weightlifting, um, like uh, squats and deadlifts, for example. These are very efficient at uh, triggering the whole muscle chain in the body. Uh, but more uh, globally, calisthenics is just an optimal way of training to understand the change in the body and uh, activate all the little parts that play a huge factor in our success long term. So it's really uh, important to master your muscle chain to perform difficult skills and harder sets because one uh, important factor in understanding the chains inside our body is understanding the importance of the diaphragm that helps breathing better. I mean, it's the breathing muscle, literally, but it contributes to your spinal stability. Uh, it has a tremendous effect on your abdomen and your thoracic spine mobility. So it is part of the kinetic chain. And when we do really advanced sets, you know, hundreds of reps uh, in a short amount of time, the breathing patterns that we try to re to to uh, implement in our, in our sets really helps uh, making those muscle chains coherent. Um, and again, it's never perfect. Uh, we always try to refine and get better. Uh, but overall, calisthenics is an awesome way to feel your muscle chains and get them more optimal over time. So training complex movements like muscle ups, handstands, squats, even push-ups or levers really help visualize and feel uh, the muscle chains. It contributes to make them better and more efficient over time. You, you'll increase your mastery of the movement and your fitness and health is just gonna benefit from this overall. You'll feel less stiff and you'll feel that your joints can move better and they have less problem uh, creating a coherent pattern. So to finish the video, I just wanted to go over a few examples of movements uh, that you can train to feel the muscle chain. So the squats and handstands are two great movements to do that. Let's go ahead and play the first one. So the squat pattern really helps visualize how the whole thing works together. So I'll go ahead and uh, fast forward or I'll, I'll um, let the video play here. And you'll see that basically my hands, when I'm gonna to start to lift my hands, is gonna really pull my entire back chain and make it a lot more coherent than when I'm not using my hand up. So it helps, it adds difficulty because obviously I have to master more of that, more of a long chain than I'm, I am when I'm, my elbows are tucked together. But once I have my hands in the air in a second, you'll see that it's gonna help the full back extend more and Really, my, my body works better uh, when I do that. So here, my, my knees, my uh, elbows are tucked together, and now I'm lifting my hands up. This really triggers everything, and I can feel it when I do it. I can feel the connection between my uh, fingers and my feet. Really, it's all connected. It makes, you know, it's a no-brainer when I say it, but really a lot of people are forgetting about it when they train. So keep that in mind next time you train, because that will play a tremendous effect on your success long term. So keep your hands in the air if you can, and that will help you strengthen your back. So really, uh, if you squat and your hands are low, then you're not helping yourself because you're most likely gonna slouch. You really, you wanna feel the whole chain inside your body moving together in a coherent way. So if you're not there yet and you can't put your hands up, then don't worry about it, but try to work your way up and uh, that will help. Now let's go over, um, oops, sorry about that. Let's go over the second video that I wanted to show you. And this is the handstand. The handstand is here. So crucial element here in the handstand, your feet. Your feet are gonna play a huge factor in your success. So 
there's no right way or wrong way to do anything in life really but biomechanics and muscles and biology basically is the same for all of us so if you're trying to refine your handstand or if you're trying to get a better line uh, pointing your toes up is going to help refining your rib cage uh, strength and alignment overall with your legs so let's play this And here I'm tucking my ribcage in as much as I can. And here, my form is decent, but I'm not really feeling the line yet. And even though my feet might not seem like they're pointing a lot, which it, you know they could be a lot better here, it's already helping me a lot to align when I'm slightly pointing my feet up. Here, boom, I'm really trying, so you really can't tell much of a difference and that's normal. Even an expert, you know, would say that it's not pointed enough, but I'm trying my best here and really trying to really point up. So my tibia is obviously helping my legs extend and then my rib cage is uh, more tucked in as a result of more extension of that chain. So I'll finish the video here. So point up, really finding the length and pointing up helps uh, refining the back line overall so again no right way or wrong way to do things but this will help refining the form and overall uh, get less injured when you repeat that pattern once you train um, this is a very important uh, section of training that really helps getting overall uh, better results uh, as you progress so i'll leave you with that handstand uh, picture here because the handstand is really one of the best way to train that, but really you could do that with anything, push-ups, pull-ups, fundamental movements. Uh, levers are awesome as well for those of you who can uh, train those. If you're not there yet, you can sign up and learn from beginning to advanced. I'll teach you everything that you need to know uh, to achieve that. Uh, but in the meantime, leave questions in the comment. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful. And I will post sources of research in the description if you want to do more uh, research on your own. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with a new video. And you guys take care in the meantime.